Hey, welcome back to the Boys Garage. I've uh, been off the grid for a little week or two, um, busy, life, etc. Uh, last video I did was cleaning the front brake calipers and keeping them mobile, keeping the pistons moving in and out. And on the back one, I've had a bit more of a problem in the sense that its seals are poking out. So where the pistons have got rubber seals, they've come out and they're poking out in the daylight and they've jammed it up. So I naturally now have to rebuild that back caliper. So it's quite common, there's a couple of little tips to show you and uh, tonight's going to be project back brake caliper if you want to call it that. So stick around, stay tuned, I'll show you what happens. Right, whipping off the back caliper on a band it's pretty straightforward. You've got the carrier that's bolted through the axle and there's two bolts hold that on and they just come out obviously with the spanner normally and just pre-release these ready to go, copper slip on them as always and there's another bolt which will be on your torque arm. I've got a different torque arm on this. But there we are, that's so caliper off. Now, these calipers are notorious, absolutely notorious for gunging up uh, because they sit in a position under slung where all the dirt goes on the top and it lays in there and it just gunges them up. They're notorious for it. So they often need attention. So there's a couple of little jobs. First one is to get the pads out. And second is to show you what the actual problem is. You can't necessarily see it, but in here, that, if you can see close, that is rubber. And that is the dust seal poking out of the pistons. And they are both poking out both sides. And that's all bad. So they need replacing. So my first job is to strip the pads out. I'll show you how that works. So you take the rubber or plastic cap off. That's just a cover, which, stupidly enough, when it lays like that, all that seems to do is catch the dirt, as you can see by the fact that it's covered in dirt. And that's about three or four days. I only cleaned that the other day, spotless. That's literally the worst design I've ever seen, ever, ever, ever. Now, the next thing that's another bad design on these is these pins. Now, obviously... If you're not sure how these go, here's a little tip for you guys who've not done this kind of thing before and a bit concerned about it, is when you see something like this that's a little bit complex and you're going to pull it all apart and worry about how it goes back together, take a photograph of it. Get your mobile phone, take a photograph and you can refer back to it. But to take these bandit ones out, all you do, you've got a little pin clip there. Just lift those up and that is effectively, you've all seen these little R clips. All that is, is one little R clip. If you look at that, that is your R clip. We've all seen them before, like that. Well, there's two of them joined together. So all that is, that holds, that holds the pins. These pins, they've got a hole there. That stops them going out through there, which as you'll see in a minute is a bit of a joke because the fact they don't go out. Now, just a sec. What you can do, if you're extremely lucky, you have the absolute luck of the devil. You can get a pair of mollies on that pin, nice and strong, and you can rotate it and wiggle it that way and it will come out. But I have never in all my 30 years motorcycle riding or working on bikes managed to get one of those out of there or ever since these bikes with these daft calipers first appeared. They do not come out. That's a blind hole that side and it just comes out of there and there's nothing to get that out. Nothing at all. So the normal way, if you're in a garage situation, you just get a little disc you cut that pin there, you bend it forward, pin that out, big mole grips and pull the back out. So you effectively destroy the pins. But there is a way of doing it, and that's drilling the caliper, because you've got a blind hole there. All you've got to do is pop a drill bit through there, and effectively you can tap them out from the back. So let's get the drill ready, and I'll show you how to do it. Stick around. Right, so here's the trick. Basically, these, uh, these pins don't want to come out. So where it was there, if you just remember a minute ago, where that was blank or blind holes, all you've got to do is bung a 5mm drill bit, centre punch it first, so you just line that up, line up the centre punch with the pin like that, centre punch it, run a 5mm drill bit down. Now that drill bit will literally tear through the alloy in, in, in a moment, you'll get lovely swarf pouring out, then it will just stop as the drill bit hits the back of the pin because it's stainless steel. And then all you've got to do is make one of these, you go close in on that, well, that is an old bolt ground down with a little pin. Because all you're looking to do, if you come in close, 
This is a real trick, easy way to get the pins out. You're looking to make a hole. Now obviously any hole you make is pointed at the bottom as a drill bit goes down to a point. So as every drill bit is pointed, you don't want a flush hole. Because what you don't want, when you put them back in, you don't want the pin coming right through. So what you've done there, as you can see, I've drilled through, gone onto there, and then literally just like that, with a toffee hammer, don't use a big hammer and beat it to death, because remember this is a, a casting, an alloy casting, and you'll crack it. So what you've got to do is put your little spike tail that you've ground down, just pop it on there. And all that will do is it will go down, and as you can see, it's starting to take the pin out. And it's starting to drop both pins out. And when you get to a point, I'm going to put it, there it is. When you get to a point, you can't even go, just put a pot rivet on it. So drop the rivet on the top, and then you just got to tap that out without hitting your hand. And that will gradually take both pins out. So I'm going to get these out, get the pads out. I'm going to do it on something a bit more solid than my left knee. Just in case of drifting them out gently. And there they are, there's your two pins. Now obviously you can cut them and put new ones in, but a pair of those is about eight pounds. So why waste three pints, four pints of beer on two pins when you can get them out like that. And the other side of it as well is, it's just a bad design. It is one of Suzuki's little faux pas. It's just a, a, a notoriously bad design doesn't want to come out. Even when they do come out, there we go. And that just leaves us, we then drop the pads out. And as we've done on the other one, these are absolutely fine. You should, you know, people say, oh well, why not put new pads in? Oh well, why not put the old ones in? They're perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with them. They're about 15 pound a pair. And that's loads more beer. So, pins will be cleaned up in a minute. Those are stainless, so they haven't suffered for their trauma. They're absolutely perfect. They'll get cleaned up in a minute. They'll get cleaned up as well. They're not sided, so it don't matter. And here's wood caliper. Now, I just wanted to show you this. I'm getting close again. As you can see, look. See in there, that little rubber do, Brad, that is the dust seal. And here, look. That is the dust seal, which is all bad. So they've got to come out. I've got to get both these pistons out and completely clean them up, put them away together with new seals in. So the first job is give them a pump. That one's moving. Okay, we've got one of the pistons out. Um, and it's all cruddy around there, which will get polished off in a minute. But the other one is well and truly jammed in there. And you can see all the crud that's jamming it in. But again, fortunately, it's the one that the fluid side pushes on. So, very handy, what you need to do, a little drift, again made out of a soft bolt, because they're stainless and they're hard. So just pop that on the back of there, make sure it's tapping on the back of the piston. And with something soft, just literally just drift it out. <laughs> it certainly explains why the brake wasn't releasing. There we go, it's coming out nice now. And there we go, on second piston. And looking at the state of these seals, there's another bit of seal there. I've no idea why all that's gone like that, but it has. And that's it. Now there's no need to, if inside, if you're looking there in the light, if inboard of the seals in here is corroded, you need new a new caliper, but that's lovely. It's nice and clean in there. Well, pretty much that one. That's just scars. Look at that. That's actually from inside the caliper. So they just need a good clean and a couple of new seals, and then the new dust boots around the outside. Got the new seals there. But before I can do anything else, I need to clean all this up and make it look lovely. So I've got some cleaning to do. 
let's get cracking. I just want to show you this while I'm cleaning it. This white stuff here, just gently scraping it out with a screwdriver. This is salt. That is nothing short of just road salt. And then when you say, people say they don't ride their bike in the bad weather, you can understand it. All that white stuff in there that's led to, it, it's basically replaced. The salt water's gone in, the water's dried away leaving the salt that's gradually increased and that has just pushed the dust seals out. Because that little recess where all that salt is sitting is the recess that the dust seal goes in. And that's it, that's just, that's just salt. Get it clean. Right, I'm going to do the caliper in a minute. Um, I may actually split the caliper so I can get in there properly, but just for now, I'm going to do the pistons first. All this cack and scuzz around here, you'd be surprised, they're never as bad as they look. You see these pistons for sale, about £35, and that's a lot of money. Here's a little trick, okay, so how to drift the pins out with the drilling thingy just now. Number 655, here's Delboy's tip, number 656. Bit of sole, hard surface, cloth, and literally just... That's all you got to do. A little bit of the old auto saw, wonderful alloy polish. And all you're doing is just using a hard surface with a cloth, just buff it off. Brings them up a tree. So I'm just going to clean these up, and there we are. I can't emphasize enough that you polish these pistons. You don't scuff them up. Don't use a Scotch Bright. Don't use emery, even if it's 1200 grit, whatever it is. Don't use anything abrasive at all. These must be polished. And then you can inspect them for little nicks and cuts that are going to come into contact with the seals. And as you can see, they're perfect. That would have been 70 pounds for two of them. They're 35 pounds a piece. So you can just polish them. They very rarely, very, very rarely, the pistons ever need anything more than polishing. They've really got to be bad to need replacing. But people replace them because I think they're just lazy or I don't know, concerned, but there we are, there's the tip, use polish, the word is polish, not scuff up, because they are mirror polished when they're new, and that was just scuzz, that's all it was, crap and rubbish, road salt, mixed with melted rubber, old brake fluid, use a soft cloth, hard surface underneath it, and buff them till they glow, that's it, right. now, so we can get inside this thing, get some of that out, right, I've decided, uh, because the state of these was so bad uh, before they were clean, um, there is so much dirt in there and I cannot get to it, I'm going to split the caliper. Now splitting a caliper is a pretty simple task, you just take the two bolts out that hold the two cast halves together, but you have to be careful because you do technically need new o-rings in there. Now if I open this and the o-rings are split, they shouldn't be because they're it was sealed and it wasn't leaking before, so it shouldn't leak now. It's just a case of being careful. But once you split a caliper, you can then get in there with a far better amount of cleaning to get those nice and clean. And that's it. Simple as that, those two halves split. Which is not... It's not bad at all. Excellent. Right. Now all we've got to do is get in there. Okay, we'll deal. That is the O-ring that takes the fluid across that. That's the journal there. That's where the fluid comes out to come into this half of the caliper. And that's the squashed flat O-ring. It's in good condition. It's not split. I'm going to be very careful not to damage it. Should be absolutely fine. I just put a little tiny bit of sealant around it before I put it back in. So carefully with this one. Just pick the old seal out. There we are, that's the old seal. It wasn't gone, it's just the crap had made the dust seals pop out. But if you look in the recess that just came out of, it's full of crap. Look. Okay, so this one's coming clean now. And here's your little tip again 657, a little bit of water salt, just in the track, old toothbrush. And just gently, what you be careful not to do is poke all this polished stuff in the feed holes for the fluid. Just rub it round the inside. Come in close. Just rub it round there with that sort of action. 
So you're literally rubbing it in the track where the seals go, because it's when the salt gets in the track behind the seal, it pushes it out, especially when it freezes. And all you do is just gently massage that back and forward like that. And all it'll do is gradually, this gray is what you get when you polish your alley normally. So I've been doing this for about five minutes and it's coming up already. So now what you do, look, here's your water salt. Just wipe it out gently. You've got to get it all out. Don't get too much build up in there. And already they're starting to come up clean. Okay, when you've got, I'm closely looking there, when you've got your piston as, or your cylinder as clean as you can be, and literally it's got to be like it's brand new. Don't be afraid to get your tool in there and lean on it because this is really good quality alloy. It probably isn't any better quality or, or mixture of alloy metal on your bike than that because that takes enormous pressure. So it's plenty strong enough to take it, get all the little bits out, get it polished like I showed you with a toothbrush. It's time to put it together. Clean hands, you get two seals, a fat one and a skinny one. The fat one is the actual pressure seal and that goes on the inside. So looking on the inside, Clean hands, everything nice and clean because you want nothing on the back of this seal. Don't need any lubricant or anything, just pop it in. It's a little bit common sense really. This sort of stuff, you just do it as you go. It will work its way in. And it's just got to be nice and sealed, nice and set rather. And it sits back in a nice recess. And there it is. You want it all in there nice and dry. You don't want any oil or anything on the inside of it or any brake fluid, it's not necessary. It doesn't go in one way or the other. They're not chamfered, they're a completely flat seal. And when you put them in, you'll notice that, just show you this on the old seal. If you look at the section of a seal, end on, they're square. There's no chamfer to it, so there's no end that sticks out more than the other to prevent the fluid coming out. It's literally just a pressure seal. But you'll feel, when you feel it, you scrape on the inside, you feel that the fluid won't come past that. And it's just the dust seal, which again, isn't chamfered in any way, it's just a round seal. Clean hands, no dust. And that again, just goes into its little recess, gently. Get everything nice and clean first. And that then goes in and it will sit it doesn't it doesn't go in as far as the pressure seal does but it will go in just fine there we go right now your nicely polished piston that's absolutely slidey and gorgeous you will get little nicks on the outside where you've nicked it with a tool or whatever but as long as the first I don't know, two thirds of it is mirror smooth, no nicks. If you've got a little dent in that, or a little nick, or a rusty dig, chuck it in the bin. But that is completely smooth. So the trick is, a little tiny smear of grease. And before I get loads of comments saying you shouldn't put grease in your system, you're not. Because when you slide that in, the seals push all the grease out of the way. So there won't be any inside. Don't get it on the back, just around the sides and a very, very light smear. It's just enough to make it move, because if it drags on them seals, it's just gonna drag them out of their seats. And then all you do, I'll have to pop it up that way so you can see what I'm doing. Just lay it on the top, nice and square, and it'll just find its own way. Now, it finds its way in. And without pressing too hard, just press evenly on either side. Tiny, you don't need any pressure, really. Not much, it will just slide in. And there we are. And you get a little recess of grease around here, which has been pushed out by the seals as you've pushed that in. And that little recess of grease, just leave it there. It will stop the salt going in and doing what has caused this in the first place. So we push that right back in as well. And now it's time just to poke the two halves back together. And all I'm gonna do, just so that that rubber seal I should, I know, yes, I know I should put another row ring on that, but I haven't got one, so that is that. A little bit of grease around there, and that will just allow it to slide into place and set nicely. Two halves back together. 
So that's the caliper back together. Now I've just got to polish the pins up, get them ready to hold the pads back in. Right. <clears throat> Obviously, give your pins a good clean, and they'll just slide back in nicely with the little holes uppermost because you've got to put that R clip, that little clip back in. So it's just that one to go first. You can put a bit of copper slip on the back of your pads to stop them squeaking. If they don't squeak, you don't need it. It's only to stop the high frequency vibration that leads to your brakes squeaking. So if they don't, you don't need it. What we do is pop those back in accordingly. A bit fiddly. But not hard. There we go. Again, this is where if you sort of like pretend if you get propensity to forget the way things come apart, this is where you can use your photograph on your camera that you took. Put them back together. There you go. And those all those clips do is hold the pads back out of the way. And there we are. Goes on the back. That's it, one caliper ready for refitting. Let's stick it back on the bike. Right, caliper's all ready to go. Pads are all in, and you can use your foot. There's a little three way. I'm just using this old dog bone to represent the disc, and I'm going to bleed it up in my hand here rather than on the bike. Obviously, trying to pump air downwards or along is a lot harder than trying to just pump the air up and out. So, here's a real quick tip I've done this before in a Harley video uh, on how to change a brake hose. And the simplest way to break bleed brakes is upside down. Get the caliper up above the master cylinder, and all you've got to do is pump down. Come in, come in close, what are you doing? Pump down there and hold the pressure on, and you'll get a little squirt of fluid there. Now you can see. You can see it moving in and out. And you can see it retracting, which is what it wasn't doing. So put a bit of pressure on it. And back on. And bleed the back one as well because they bleed separately. So again, see the rear piston moving. That's it. It's alright. Let's wipe that off. And when you splash brake fluid on your wife, you can just wipe it off. <laughs> Sorry. Now that just obviously is a free-ended job but doing it upside down look at that perfect fluid drain hold it on lock that off and that is absolutely rock solid in a second that's it don't take any more to that side again if you bleed it up this way the air naturally just comes up the fluid drains to the bottom so you get a solid system all the way up you get a nice reactive back brake There you go, that's lovely. There's no air in that. Don't lean on these little brake nipples, they don't need much. They're only an 8mm bolt head, and again, they're into alley as ever. So, take out a little spacer which was just temporary. Now, that is bled up, ready to fit back on the bike. So, what we've got to do is feed it through that way, in through this brace, straight on like that. So, the bolts back in. Pop up seat fluid. Now, so there we are. That spins freely. Nice rock hard pedal. And that's it. And the final test is a road test. So, whenever you do a job like this, double check all the bolts you've taken out, treble check them if you're not sure. Make sure you've got no bits left over. Bits left over is all bad. So once you're done, get on it in daylight if you can. Take it for a ride. If you think you might need a spanner, put it in your pocket. And that really is it. When you get back, have a good look over it. What you're checking mostly for with hydraulics, if you've had them all in bits, is leaks. So make sure nothing's leaking. So that really is it. That is a rear caliper, completely refurbished, from scratch, completely stripped and rebuilt. And that took me in between editing probably two hours 
So two hours of your life to make sure your back brake is absolutely like brand new. You don't need a new caliper. And those seals cost me, the whole job, total cost was £6? £7.50. £7.50, there we are. £7.50 all in and a couple of hours of your life. Right, there you go. Thanks for tuning in and watching Dilma's Garage. Ride safe, make sure your brakes work. See you next time.